basically, I'm really fucking this up. Do you want to start over? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So our process uh, for um, number 17, so we started with a really super basic chance score and each, uh, each dancer had um, a score with numbers zero through nine and they were, they correlated to um, a movement activity. Sometimes it was just a particular body movement, right? Or like a direction. We made a master phrase from those chants, from those chant solos. And so once we had the master phrase and that sort of became our like pot of dance. I started building um, just little like sections of the work, trying out structures and, and such. And things just started to sort of fall into place and every every choice that I make becomes a snowballing choreography effect where you know you just start to go oh no well that doesn't work but this totally works or you know uh, I like this but um, it was important to me to really look at what the dancers were interested in doing um, and what they were strong at doing so and I, I like to do that a lot is, is work with solos and specific dancers good thank you that's amazing I have a movement history of dancing my whole life. I'll speak to my aesthetics first, which are um, uh, spatial design. I very much admire Trisha Brown's work and the way that she maps things out and found that really, um, found it interesting to learn her work from a choreographer's point of view. The work of Merce Cunningham, which is direct, clear lines, people moving in the space, lots of transitions. I don't ever like seek to mimic either of these choreographers, but I know that their work has influenced me because so much of it has been so impactful, you know, to me, and I've like connected with it so much. So I try, I try to at least be aware of like who's my influence and what do I like so much so that I don't go too deep into influential territory slash derivative territory. <laughs> So. We'll just travel this line across, and we'll keep like dropping people off. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, my preparation process is pretty variable. It's also extremely reliable. The way that I pr prepare usually um, is just to think about what I'm interested in. I like people in the space and I like to indicate the space so no matter where it is, um, in this case a black box, but often non-traditional spaces I just kind of like to know where I am so that I can reference it um, in some way. But I, uh, so I'm very much influenced by uh, spatial patterns. The dancers moving in space together uh, and the connections between the dancers. Each person basically had a solo and we started um, we started integrating them into duets. We started integrating them into um, basically like creating this general dance vocabulary. often use like chance procedures just to like figure out the sequence of the works or like how the works sort of layer on each other in performance. There's not often a lot of room for quiet dancing. It tends to be very direct and like impacting in the space. I guess there are multiple parts to being finished, right? So there was our sketch that was finished. Pretty much knew that the beginning was set and I had intentionally set what I thought was the beginning and that actually worked. And then the end, um, it definitely seems like this this shift in the choreography, the ending with, with Jess and Sophie like having their arms together 
when that happened, I was like, that's the end. Like, that's definitely, but I didn't do it really on purpose. I just sort of, I just knew. Yeah! I let it, I just try, I try to do something new every time. Yeah, right, so that it goes like this direction. It's like something, you know, if someone else were to look, they'd be like, that looks like the same dance. But to me, it feels really different, you know, like this dance versus this dance because I'm trying to actively, thoughtfully do something slightly different or, you know, change some things or investigate something new, so. Yeah.